Okay, here we go. My name is Eric Smythe for Christ. My name is Eric Smythe. Um, the Lord doesn't want me hiding my name on any, any channels anymore. So, Dynamic Gracer, uh, whatever, is Eric Smythe. So, Eric Smith, you can pronounce it. I don't really care. Call me anything but late. <coughs> sorry. Call me anything but late for heaven. So, this is Melissa. I'm sorry her eyes are closed. She's... Uh, She's kind of, she's beautiful, uh, but she's the biggest anti-Mormon in the world, and she's the biggest anti-Mormon of all time on the female side of it. Uh, actually, no, sorry, San Sandra Tanner is the biggest anti-Mormon of all time on the female side of it. She's an apostate Mormon. <coughs> Melissa, she's kind of a hyper-arrogant uh I, I wouldn't say she's an oaf, but she is. I don't. I don't think. I don't think she's as dumb. I don't think she's as dumb as Mike Winger, but she's probably slightly smarter than Mark. Um, well, yeah. She. What am I saying? She's an idiot. <coughs> I think Mike Winger is probably smarter than her, actually. If you just gave them both a pen and paper, gave them twenty five hours to write something. I mean, I think Melissa would come up. With more blasphemous writings than Mike Winger. And Mike Winger, you know, would have some simple third grade stuff too, but. <clears throat> Continually surprised to know how many Muslims are actually We're in my city. More than I realized. His name was Abdullah. He was very smart, it. very kind, and I'm very glad he came over to talk with me. He was also very tall. We have the now, other, uh, the the BBQ. There are a few things in this interview that I want to point out for you guys to pay attention to. Number one, let it be known that I actually don't know a lot about Islam. I know very general things, but. <coughs> Neither do I. As far as like my <coughs> lane of expertise. The only thing you need to know is they have a minimized view of Jesus. And once you go down the Jesus rabbit hole, you lose respect for all religions that have a minimized Jesus. They think he's merely a prophet. So they could stick it for that. I had one verse memorized, Quran 354. <clears throat> Turns out it's out of context. So I repented and I know the hunger bash them with that verse. But yeah, I, I know they have... I know it's an Abrahamic religion, and it's based off of uh, <coughs> the God of the Old Testament. It's not my lane. So it was really interesting just to kind of gather what he believed. But again, just full disclosure, there are times I just didn't know where to poke and prod at until after the fact. Another thing to keep in mind while watching interviews like this is that it's, it's hard to have a conversation with somebody with this much time. <laughs> you never know how much time each person that you're talking to is going to have. Knowing what to ask, when to ask it, it can be a little challenging. But nonetheless, I, I love talking with people. I, I love asking questions and getting to know what they believe. And, and, and <coughs> You need to trust the Lord. And let him feed you thoughts in real time. Um, one of the worst things I've been doing recently <coughs> is when thoughts come into my head in power preaching situations. I just won't. I'll just decide not to say it. No, that's not when you decide not to say it, Eric. You say it. But uh, I mean, there's exceptions. Sometimes you're being tested. But. And just asking them why they believe what they do. There are things in this interview that I think I did pretty good. There are things in this interview that I think I could have done better. And for that reason, in a few weeks, I'm actually going to have somebody on, somebody that I would consider an expert in Islam. And we're going to go over this video in real time. And I'm going to ask nice. them, hey, what would you have said? What could I have done better? And maybe explain a little bit about... Oh, sorry. What I shouldn't have... Well, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to put a dislike before I watch the video. <coughs> even though I don't like this broad. Uh, meant by this or whatever he said. We're just going to kind of pick it apart. <laughs> I'm going to allow them to kind of pick on me a little bit, uh, but in hopes of knowing how to do this better next time if I run into another Muslim, which inevitably I will because apparently they're all over my city, but also just general <coughs> education about Islam Sorry, and how I'm to coughing. reach this community. So keep a lookout for that. I don't really know when it will come out, but it will be soon-ish. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this interview. All right, we're in downtown Albuquerque right now in what we call, lovingly, Old Town Albuquerque. It's a beautiful place. Lots of people actually come here uh, to evangelize. We are one of them. There's me. And here's just kind of the scenery around us. There's some music in the background. So if you hear it, that's where it's coming. <coughs> this is the beginning of my interaction with Abdullah, who is very kind. Okay, she looks really pretty in this. Wow, that's as pretty as I've ever seen her. She looks cute. Um, wow. To come over and talk with me, the first thing we start talking about is the Bible. Okay, so if when the Bible, you know, uh, depicts Jesus, especially in the Gospels, as like being one with the Father, equal to him in all ways, worship, pray to, uh, what do you think about that? Too long-winded at the beginning. Hey, this is a really good comment. Hey, this is a great comment. <coughs> Let's put a... Skip 
timer thing. It's 2024 after all. Amen and amen. I believe this is Anybody have time for that? of interpretation. And maybe <gasps> it's a bit changed. The Bible, we believe the Bible has been changed. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you mean by that? How has it been tempered with? For example, in the Quran, we believe that the Injil, the God, which means gospel, was given to Jesus. And we believe the Torah was given to Moses. And scripture was given to David and Abraham. They all received. If it's interesting, I got it. But see, slow so it down we believe a bit. in the gospel according to Jesus. <clears throat> but we, I don't think we have that today. So, how would we know what the gospel is then? Well, I think um, uh, the people recording it, they didn't have exactly what came from Jesus' mouth. <gasps> how do you know that? Well, I think I'm not sure if the Bible even claims to be that. It does. For example, the disciples, okay, they claim to be eyewitnesses, which is what the Gospels are. So they, they had four, like, okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All those are, are them after the fact. <clears throat> the Lord wants me to say this. I'm a really bad karate kid. I'm a really good Bruce Lee. down, hey, we're recording this because we saw this. Just so <coughs> you know. Explain what later. Okay, so why do you disagree? I'm not sure Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are actually known who exactly these people were. Okay, so Mark, for example, is Peter's account. Matthew is Matthew's account. Luke is Luke going out and doing interviews, getting the information from eyewitnesses. And then John, of course, my personal favorite, um, is one of the disciples. And they wrote and penned their own Gospels. Of so, course it's your favorite. There's no repentance in John. How, what are you saying? Are you saying that they made it up? Are you saying that it's not true? Like, yeah. I'm just kidding. She loves repentance. I have nothing against her, uh, her Gospel outside of the once saved, always saved nonsense. What do you mean by that? Well, <coughs> I'm saying some of it has been But at least she has so repentance. How? Some of it was not, you know, it was because it's, you're taking the gospel. You know, I'm not exactly sure. Because um, this is why I'm asking, because if... That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you're having um, an ancient manuscript, let's just take the letters of Paul or the, the uh, New Testament writings in general, and we have copies of them by the thousands. And so that would mean... Complete form. How, what do you mean by that? So I believe the oldest manuscript mm -hmm. is about the size of a credit card. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I don't believe it's even from the first century. It might be from the first century or the second century. So are you saying that we have one little snippet of like, say, for example, one of the Gospels? Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah. There's tens of thousands what of idiot. partial and complete copies. <laughs> complete copy? Yes. Let me elaborate more. There's 40,000. Say I didn't them. like the news from yesterday. Okay. There's tens of thousands of copies of the newspaper from yesterday, the New York Times. And so some of it's been destroyed, but there's plenty of copies still in circulation that will exist years and years and years down the line, okay? If I didn't like what was said yesterday in the news, that means I would have to gather every single copy that's ever been in print in existence and change it in order for it to be different 100 years down the line. That's kind of the same situation with the New Testament. <coughs> yes, I mean, I don't believe, I, I don't know, I, I'm kind of uh, challenging your, your claim that there's, from the time of Jesus, Peace be upon him, because we do believe in Jesus. Yeah. Huh. That exactly what he was preaching. So stop it right there. No, you don't. You don't believe in Jesus. Shut the fox up. F O X. <coughs> you don't know Jesus. Thank Jesus you. Is exactly recorded verbatim out his mouth. If you today. think Jesus is a prophet and not God, you don't. I don't know believe him. you have that. Let me ask you a different question. What would you say about your salvation? Like, how sure are you that when after you die, you're gonna go to heaven? That's a really good question. And for me, it depends on what mood God is in. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. But if we take the Bible seriously, no one's going to heaven except a few people. Like First Peter 4.18 says, the righteous scarcely make it into heaven. You can imagine what happens to the ungodly and the sinner. And I wish it was just that one verse, but... <coughs> I gotta be careful when I pause it. When I'm on low battery, it'll turn off the video. Um, but you know, it's one of those conversations that a lot of people think that they're just gonna have with God when they die, and they will. They'll go through every word that they said. They'll have the life review. There are some people who are so wicked. There's no life review. You just get chucked in hell. But <coughs> I just think a lot of people, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll just talk to God. And I'll have a big conversation with him on Judgment Day. 
But in my opinion, and I got this from a guy named Aaron. He said this first, so I want to give him some credit. You got to have that conversation today and tonight. Start talking to God. But I'll say for me, I definitely deserve hell. And any Christian who says otherwise is ridiculous. Um, I'm nowhere near 100%. I would not be shocked if uh, God threw me in hell. Absolutely not shocked at all. I'm just hoping to scream loud enough to maybe get into limbo after I get thrown into whatever. Isaac and I both believe in a dynamic hell. Dyna uh, Isaac's probably the only one who's even listening to this video at this point. But yeah, anyway, this girl's beautiful. I can't get over it. Um, she does not usually look like this. The guy is probably attractive to girls just because he's so tall, but... I'm not really into tall guys. I am, but I'm not. I don't know. I think she's more beautiful than him, though, personally. So I have no doubt. They're both obviously very beautiful. <laughs> that eventually I'll make it to heaven. What do you mean eventually? So this is this is the caveat. That um, anyone who testifies that there's no God where God... I like how she has her hand on her side like that. I think it's really hot. Do you worship? Uh, can't get over Except it. the one true God. And but that Muhammad is the last talking about Mexican Jesus. <coughs> messenger out of a long line of prophets, including Abraham, Moses, Jesus. Muhammad was the last one. So whoever testifies to this will eventually reach paradise. However, you will, God will judge everyone based on their deeds. So say you Amen. killed a lot of people or, you know, say you burned people. You will have to pay for this. Either Good. punishment in the grave, punishment on the day. It's a lot better than atheism, I'll tell you Judgment, that. Or you'll be in hellfire for some time. But eventually... The atheists think they can just get away with it, you know? Everyone. Who it's a very logical religion. It's just the Jesus that they believe in is a completely different Jesus than I worship. <coughs> I somehow have Jesus, you know. Either, if you want to go like Tertullian's Trinity Hyperstatic Union, you could do that. Or you could take the LDS view, Social Trinitarianism. Or you could even be modalist, but you can't have him being a prophet. That's ridiculous. Testify. He 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 claimed to be God too many times, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's not like he was kidding, you know. Like Joseph, anyways, Joseph Smith when he says, "Hey, I'm a I'm this great guy," he's kidding, you know. That there's no God worthy of worship except the one true God. Mm -hmm. Well. Exactly. That's why they put him on that. Should be taken out of hell. All right. Let's switch gears from like a cultural aspect. You and I, I would actually agree on some <sighs> cultural things. I, I would think. So let me ask you about that. What do you think about you know things like the LGBTQ plus uh, situation oh, we have going good. on, like uh, pronouns? Do you agree or disagree? Well, Islamically. Well, let me answer first. It's an abomination before me. You can imagine how abominable it is before God when he's in a bad mood. But when God's in a good mood, he's all flubby dovey and he sees them. The way I see this girl right now, because she's wearing something nice. She's got her hand on her side. She's so hot. You know, I kind of just want to marry her, fill her up with babies and stuff like that, just because she's so hot. I don't even usually like brunettes, but um, I'm in a good mood right now, you know. And that's kind of how God sees it. LGBT. He, he can come up with... Not just a million reasons, but a hundred million reasons to love the LGBTQ plus people. <coughs> he designed them, injected them with cosmic fractional infinities. Every human being is love worthy. Um, so a community is just a group of people. But when God's in a bad mood, he may see them for the sinners that they are. And he just sees them as sin. Now, if you go to Utah, you see Mormons... In a church building, <sighs> when God's in a bad mood, He sees them as a lot as being a lot worse than the LGBTQ plus. And when He's in a good mood, I assume He likes the religious people more. He's drunk, you know. But when He's in a bad mood, He hates the religious people the most <laughs> for their hip hypocrisy, micro hypocrisy. There's always that one random psycho who's actually, you know. 
keeping all the commandments every second of every day. But, you know, Alex Harker, uh, Kelly Goldsberry on the girl side. And then for the guys, I don't know. Gary Giardelli comes to mind. And non-Utah Bishops are pretty good, too. Even Utah Bishops are pretty good. That's why they're called to be a bishop, right? And then to accept the calling and do all that work for free. But a lot of the bishops are, you know, considered wicked by God when God's in a bad mood. And if you don't think God has mood swings, I mean, I got news for you. <laughs> he does it not, not. Uh, you know, homosexuality is forbidden. And also uh, dressing like the opposite gender is also something specific. Yes, it's worse. It's so common. It's so common now. It's Agree crazy. with that, though, in your religion? It used to be. I mean, you used to at least be unique. <laughs> you know, I mean, everyone blasphemes the authenticity thing on October 31st as a joke. And you could argue that's demonic. But if you're doing it one day a year, I mean, it's like, yeah, stick it. But these people are serious now. They're like, no, no, no. I'm like, man, woman, woman, man. I mean, what? this is this is the teaching of Islam, so we'll have to agree with it. I don't agree that it should be kind of taught in schools to children. And I think sometimes it goes a little bit too far now. Yeah, yeah I agree. With and, and also, you know, religion is very important. It's like the third most important thing. <laughs> number one is God. Number two is good and evil. And number three... Okay, number one is God, number two is holiness, number three is good and evil, number four is um, religion. That. Do you ever think that you could do enough to please Allah? Our deeds are Ooh, the answer is yes. Yes, you could do things to please God. <clears throat> Melissa, she's a workspace salvationist until she starts bashing workspace salvationists. Then she pretends like she's free grace. Melissa believes in repentance, so she's a workspace salvationist. Workspace salvation was a heresy back in the day, which was talking about mosaic works. It's talking about Pauline works. They called it workspace salvation. But today, if you love God too much, you're a workspace salvationist. If you if you have holiness, you're going to hell. <clears throat> and that's what Melissa does to the Mormons. They'll they'll take Moroni chapter ten verse thirty two. And then they'll mix it with sinless perfectionism, a verse from Helaman and James too. And they'll say, oh, you're heretics. SP, sinless perfectionism, um, workspace salvation. But Islam, they please God through repentance. And now she calls it workspace salvation because she wants to be on her little high horse. And again, she has her hand on her hip and it's very hot to me. Same but how it is. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was talking to his companions. And he said, no one will enter heaven but by the mercy of Allah. And the companions said, even you, O Prophet of Allah? And he said, even me. So while our, our deeds are important, it's only by the mercy of Allah that we enter paradise. So do you think that you're going to get in heaven? Me, yeah. Okay, because you believe those things. Right. Okay, so what, what if you believe those things, but then you act different? Well, like I said, um, if you acted different, see, but but that's the thing because even if you, it gets factored in, in Islam, you're you're looking at the in the second in hell, and say you lived in this life. So it's funny in Christianity we have a white throne judgment, then a bema seat, <coughs> and um, and you had everything. You were a king, and you had all the pleasure. But you we just think they're crazy. Lived in hell for a second, that God will ask that person. They say, I never knew anything good. And the opposite is true, too. Say, in this life, you had a very harsh life. Oh, yeah, the rewards judgment was our third one. They just mix it all into one judgment. You know, oppressed. But you're just dipped in paradise for a second. It's like I never had any hardship. So, but going back to your question, yes, you will reach paradise if you believe in Allah and the Messenger. But, but one of the reasons why you can know that Islam is trash, you will see tens of thousands of people converting or more from Islam to Christianity. I was is. I was Muslim, and now I found Jesus. But you're not going to find anyone in any serious way going from Christianity to Islam. 
No one's gonna ditch Christ for Muhammad. That's ridiculous. No one's ever. No one's. Nobody does that. You know, God is totally just. So he will. God is totally just. <laughs> I you know, like that you, actually. You will have to pay for the sins that you committed. So if I pay for the sins that it I make, it's a very logical religion. It's just with us as Christians, we can access. So Jesus can satisfy Allah's demands of justice by dying on the cross for our sins, conditioned on repentance. So if I were to make my own religion right now, I'd be Allah with a splash of Christianity. That'd be a fun religion to make. And then without the eternal conscious torment. Committed. <clears throat> That's basically what Mormonism is, Is there ever is, an, an area where that would be enough? Or is there something else that I could possibly do or believe in to have that all paid in full? Well, she's talking about the atonement. She's like, do you think maybe perhaps there's a loophole where the Son of God comes down and pays the whole price? God can forgive all any sin. So they already have an infinitely forgiving God via repentance. They don't need uh, imputed righteousness. Um, so they seem to have that So covered. if you repent from the, any sin that you do, God can forgive that, right? Watch her pretend like he's crazy, even though she believes the same thing. But if you harm somebody, you will have to you have to be punished for that. What if you don't harm anybody? What if, okay, let, let me ask you, okay, let's just take the Ten Commandments. Okay, have you ever stolen anything? Me? <laughs> That's brilliant. Just change the subject, pretend like we don't believe the same exact thing. Well, as Muslims, we, it's forbidden for us to reveal our bad deeds. So now she's going full Ray Comfort. Well, yes, I have stolen something. <laughs> so, so yes, you have. Yeah, I have, yeah. Like Jesus is talking about, you know, lust. And, you know, if you've ever even looked at something... Good. Thank God I haven't lusted in this video. ...with lust in your heart, you're, you're as bad as an adulterer. Right? Have you ever done right. that? Well, we don't, we don't say... I haven't done it this video. <laughs> you're as bad as an adulterer. That's what he said, though. She just yeah. looks well, hot. Well, I'm we... just saying she's hot. I'm not saying I'm lusting for her, even though I said I'd love to make babies. Okay, we follow the, I might have. Uh, We follow the teachings of Muhammad. Peace be upon So, in, in Christianity, it's called the atonement, right? Where... You know, if she, Melissa, if you're somehow watching this, just go ahead and wear a jacket, a triple jacket. <laughs> you can wear whatever you want, but don't expect, you know. Anyway. There, there's uh, an exchange going on in place because God, do you do you believe that God needs us to be perfect in order to dwell with him? He's going to say no. <laughs> Allah has, you know, realistic standards for humans who are an abomination before him. <laughs> like, no, God's going to create a bunch of imperfect, hyper-wicked beings and then expect perfection and not offer atonement. <laughs> well, see. no, no one's perfect. So how There you go. He doesn't... How would he... The God of Christianity... Requires perfection. That's what the white throne judgment is. So you sit on that throne, and then you do, and then if you're a baby, <laughs> you might be able to convince God you're perfect, just because you're a baby. If you're not a baby, um, then he's gonna say, "Well, James two ten. <clears throat> I don't know. You didn't make it. You're wicked." He just sees you as a human. And then you say, no, I'm friends with Jesus. Then you go to the beam of seat, get the, the wickedness cut off. Then you go to the rewards. Allow sin then in heaven. Well, you'll be purified of your sin. How? Purgatory. Well, through the hellfire. Or? Through the hellfire. It's a very logical religion. I have no problem with it. I'm just saying they have a minimized Jesus. And why would I trade... Mormonism or Christianity for Islam when it's just a weaker version of what I already have. It's like it doesn't – I'm good. If you want to come over to our religion, do it. But I'll tell you this, better than atheism, better better than – I don't know if it's better than agnostic. Agnostic might be better just because with agnostic, you still, you're still worshiping God but in your own fun way. God can forgive all <clears> – <throat> Plus they have some weird commandments that I don't even it's like. So. Just like that. Just they have a law telling them to do stuff that I don't eh. like that. Well, you have to ask for forgiveness. You have to humble yourself and ask say, I, I'm sorry. You're the one that it makes made sense, all this. Melissa. And without your forgiveness, I'll be a loser. Please forgive me. Okay, so what if somebody prays that 
and they don't believe in Muhammad or anything like that. Does that mean that God, that Allah can forgive them on a whim? Please well, yes. from my understanding, I'm just a layman, that if you see, if it goes back to if you didn't know. At this point. You're kidding. Dude, If so if Allah exists, she just said if someone asks him for forgiveness, according to Islam, yes. <clears throat> Please tell me Allah isn't like sectarian, like us. Because Christians hate uh, Muslims. Because the according to Christians, you go to the white throne judgment. Oh, you think Jesus was a prophet, and then you basically chuck all of them in hell. I don't know what kind of ex I don't know how you're going to get through the white throne judgment as a Muslim if our if our religion is true. And then Mormonism, you also get chucked into the fire. Um, it's very similar to Islam, ironically, if you're Muslim. So with Mormons, we ba it's basically Islam and Christianity put together. If you access Jesus, we're Christian. If you don't access Jesus, then we go to the... Uh, you basically go to hell and you go to purgatory. <clears throat> it's called spirit prison. <clears throat> and then if you're really bad, you go to Son of Perdition, uh, Hellfire. The super hell. Abdullah had to go. So There's a super hell in Mormonism. So, so Mormonism is probably the best religion, all things considered. But Christianity is maybe the best if you're Christian. Really tired holding up the microphone for that long. But as you have the best God too, and He's a. You get to have an arrogant piece of, piece of pie and piece of cake. Piece of love. You can see he. Piece of big, 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 big. You have a Hebraic. Uh, uh, a hyper Hebraic mega. Very kind, very straightforward, not argumentative. It was a great conversation. He With Mormons, you get kind of more of an exalted man. That he had. Whatever that is. He's not exalted man. He's an exalt. He's not exalted man. He's exalted man. Five minutes and he gave me ten. So I really appreciate tired holding a man. Man, she's so hot. Long. But as you can see, he was very kind, very straightforward, not argumentative. Back to if you did. Yeah, she's gonna act like she won this. Well, from my understanding, I'm just a layman. She's like, I destroyed him in that interview by changing the topic. That <laughs> if you see, if it goes back to Whatever, if you didn't know. Melissa. At this point, Abdullah had to go. Plus, my arm was getting really tired holding up the microphone for that long. But as you can see, he was very kind, very straightforward, not argumentative. It was a great conversation. Um, she looks really hot in those glasses, but she needs to take them off. Um, for for not just the video, but so the person can see that their uh, her eyes. Don't wear glasses. Uh, when you're talking to people about serious things, people that, in this context, I mean, if it's really sunny and the glasses are thin, if you could see the eyes through it, then maybe it's okay. And he but, said that he had five minutes and he gave me 10. So I really appreciated that. Please yeah, when someone says they have five minutes, it's axiomatic that it's five minutes plus a few extra minutes if the conversation's good and maybe one minute less if the conversation's really bad. Let's pray for Abdullah. Pretty good. Let's pray for her. <clears throat> and I'm going to close my eyes. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want to pray? Let's do it. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this day. Lord God, thank you so much. Actually, let's pray to a bigger God here. Since this is getting very multi-religious. Um, dear, he who is biggest, he who is best, biggest God in any universe anywhere, whether it's Allah, Jesus, <laughs> I'll take any of them. As long as they're the biggest and the best. Krishnu, whichever one is the biggest and the best, I pray this to you. Lord God, not all my listeners worship you. They like parts of you, but they don't like all of you. But Lord, I thank you so much for um, Melissa giving me this entertaining video that I can make fun of her. Lord, um, only 2 to 3% of the reason why she's so hot today is, is because of her. The other 97% at least is because of you. So you made that really hot girl, that pretty, very pretty broad. And I don't like her as a person. I don't like her personality. I don't even write, <clears throat> like her religion that much, but she's so hot. And it's nice on the eyes, especially in this little pink dress here. Let's go back so we can see it. Wow. She's so hot. And Lord, thank you so much for making all these hot girls. Even some of the ugliest girls are pretty hot. Especially if you don't see a girl for a long time and then you see one. Um, anyways, Lord, I pray for uh, listeners' chastity. Uh, especially for my...
brothers and sisters of humanity, they have, a lot of them struggle with chastity because they're all warm-blooded or whatever you want to call it. But I have no problem with chastity. Chastity is a uh, the ninth fruit of the Spirit, and it's very uh, overrated in the religious world and extremely underrated in the non-believing world. <laughs> they think they could just mop up 100 bodies and have no consequences. Uh, and then the religious people think that if they're a virgin, they're going to heaven. So both, I would say the religious people are, are way more whack than the non-religious when it comes to chastity. Um, I'm a virgin. I'm going to hell when I die, obviously. If we take the Bible seriously and stuff like that. So Lord, I pray if it's Allah that you can forgive me using the, uh, repentance and if it's christian if it's free grace um derp 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 i'll bend the knee to free grace theology for one second oh i'm saved forever <coughs> if it's uh what's the other one if it's a two-point gospel you know i repent if it's a three-point gospel i've already been baptized and if it's near the end then i'm fearing and trembling every second of every day of the rest of my life which is okay that's what philippians 2 12 tells us to do Lord God, I pray for uh, Melissa and her arrogance, um, pride and arrogance is not very attractive in the eyes of religious people when looking at a man, but it's really disgusting in a woman. Thankfully, she could back it up because she does have a lot of good knowledge and stuff, but she's a bitch. And, uh, she's hot, though, but she's a bitch. Let's take a look at her channel, Lord. Take a look at this bitch. Okay, she's... She's pretty, uh... Anyways. Lord, I just pray for her salvation. She's gonna be judged on every word, um... She's a teacher, James, and look at all these views. Once you see the 180Ks, look at this. Look at these views on there. Oh, my gosh, 1.2 million. Hope you didn't say anything wrong. Top five New Age teachings. Okay, that's, that video's got to be good. The time a Christian visited Jehovah's Witness. I've seen it a long time ago. The Bible is clear about homosexual behavior. Now she's mocking superficial Christians. That's a good video. I've seen it too. Anyway, Lord, I hope you... Um, you know what I pray for? Discipline. Hebrews 12, 6-8. Puppies for Christ. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And if ye be without chastisement, ye be bastards and not sons, illegitimate children. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. One of the best ways to get humility is to exalt yourself to a throne and then get hit off of it. Proverbs chapter 13 talks about taking that rod and hitting the child. So, Lord, please use Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5, and Psalm 94, 12, and Psalm 119, verse 71. Melissa, Lord, she's so hot, and she loves you, and... She probably has fiery 35-minute prayer sessions, and that also makes me sweat. But a little bit of pride can hurt the whole thing in your eyes. And she's hot, but so is hell. And Lord, uh, if I was a random woman in the United States, um, that would be me committing micro transition just just the thought of being a woman I think it's made probably a sin I'm transitioning into a woman in thought that doesn't make any sense I'm a man lord and if you want to turn me into a woman when I get to heaven that would be so humbling and humiliating for me but I will play my role with tears in my eyes I'll be so scared Proverbs eight seventeen comes to mind Top left-hand corner. <sighs> by the blood, by the blood. 
I love those who love me, and those who seek me earnestly shall find me. I would love to be a woman in heaven because, um, well, first, we'd have our first funny woman ever. But also, I'd be able to leverage myself in the debate, but that men are better than women. I'd have, if you give me the rationality, I'd have rationality, humor, and I'd have the flesh of a woman, the voice of a woman. It would be profitable for the kingdom of God. I'd have tits and a vagina, you know. It's depressing. It's sad. Who wants to be the second best gender? No one except some women. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be LGBT and you're gonna be trans, at least be a woman transitioning to a man. Like, bro, if you're a man, why would you want to be a woman? That makes absolutely no sense. And you know what I want to be? A, uh, the other gender. The, the weaker vessel. Eh, fuck you. Fuck you, bro. Fuck you. Speaking of which, last time I said fuck you over text, because... I mean, saying this, fuck you. I wrote that. I said, fuck you, bro, I think. Love your channel, Melissa. Okay, I can't put it on that comment. Fuck you, bro. I wonder if I can put a fuck you, bro, on one of these guys. Here's some good comments. Um, Thank you for doing this. If somebody says something mean, I'll drop the, the fuck you, bro. Yeah, the spirit of the video is in the comment section. So it's pretty. It was a pretty nice video. Here we go. Fuck you, bro. So I have no problem when people say first, but if there was, oh, I can't even say it then. But this guy said that he loved his dog more than his wife. I just said fuck you, bro. Fuck you, bro. Anyways, Lord, please send her a guy for her to get married. It looks like she's single. Lord, I pray that he's an alpha male who, honestly, I mean, not to be crude, but <sighs> you know what I mean. I'm not going to say it out loud. And he's an alpha male, you know. And he can make her humble. And he can yell at her. And he can, you know, whatever she needs. I don't know. Something. That's a good prayer, though. And I pray for, and even more than this bitch on the left, Lord, I, gotta, I pray for the guy on the right. He seems like a, a, a good, winnable soul. He's not a reprobate like JS77 and... SOP, um, quick action, all those reprobates. Lord, I pray for him to find the real Jesus, for him to maybe get deceived into Protestantism and then find the real Jesus from there, or possibly just take the full on out. I don't know, something. Maybe meet a Christian girl and flirt to convert, and she, and she tries he tries to convert her and she converts him. I don't know. Something. Lord, I know you could figure it out, but <laughs> if he does die, I pray for mercy for him. Because the evangelical psycho Jesus is gonna throw him into heaven, hell forever and ever and ever. Because he's a one, he's a Muslim. We build sectarian walls and everything outside the wall is not just, not as good as us, but full on out, full blown, fiery fire. I pray whatever God is the biggest to give the God of evangelical Christianity a massage. 
so he doesn't go full psycho on us. Amen.